Oh, it's good to see you on the weekend. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of February 10th. Now, I told you yesterday in Friday's video that I was planning on relaxing this weekend by doing some research and due diligence. Honestly, I enjoy doing it. I find it fun looking and finding a stock that has potential to make us money. And I think I found us one. This looks like it's under the radar, about ready to explode, and they are in a booming sector. This is a Canadian company, ticker E-N-T-E-F. Name of the company is ESE Entertainment. Now, you're probably not too familiar with this company, unless, of course, you're a gaming enthusiast, because that's what they're involved with, eSports Gaming. Now, we're not talking about eSports as in baseball, football, live sporting events. We're talking about video gaming over the internet, over blockchain, even dabbling in the metaverse right now, which I am sure will get huge when the metaverse gets huge. Now, ESE, they got all the infrastructure to support their business 100%, all the aspects of it. Now, we're going to go deeper into this in a few minutes, but in a nutshell, their primary focus is to connect the gaming sponsors, the game developers and publishers with their gaming enthusiasts, their fans, which leads them into their second priority, advertising and marketing. They got to get the word out there, create this buzz, create this magnetic effect to pull everybody together. And the best way they're doing that right now is by sponsoring these live gaming events, these competitions. They get these huge auditoriums which hold thousands of people all watching people play games. And the players can win up to, well, over $100,000. This is not a little industry. Right now, we have got over 3,500 game developers in the world, and you know they're making more than one game each. And we have got approximately 3 billion gaming enthusiasts in the world. What? That's like almost half the population of the world. And you know they're interested in more than just one game. So between the two, the developers and the gamers, you got a lot of business going on there. Matter of fact, we have just crossed over to $200 billion a year in this sector. It is a huge market. There's a lot of money to be grabbed. Now, the company has also recently expanded into iGaming. We're talking about gambling. This is a whole new thing. It's starting up in Canada. They've got the new division started, but there's not a whole lot of information yet. But it can't be ignored because there's a lot of money to be made in gambling. So the company finished on Friday at about 30 cents with just over 2% gains. And look at that. She's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. They literally call it the best. It's the best because here you have to give out all the information you got on your company. They are as transparent as glass. They literally could be on the major exchanges. They give us so much information. They got all the green ticks we're looking for over here. Verified profile, transfer agent verified, looking good. Independent directors, you need those if you're going to uplist. Now, I don't know if they use them to get to the QX from the QB or the pink, or if they have plans of jumping from the QX up to the NASDAQ maybe. But you got to have independent directors if you're going to uplist, and they have them. And we got a bonus here. I like this. They're penny stock exempt. They may be 29 cents on the OTC market, but they literally are not considered a penny stock. Guess we shouldn't be looking at it then, should we? So how did that happen? Well, they proved themselves reliable. The definition of penny stock exempt means you have to be in business for three to five years, have millions of dollars in assets during that time, and keep up with your financial filings. They've done that, so they look really good. Now, before we jump into looking at all that the company is here, because we could be there for a little while, let's take a look at the other information we got over here at the OTC market. What was the relative volume around her on Friday? Oh, well, I told you she was under the radar. Still is. She fell from 11,500 shares a day to 7,000 shares a day. Seriously under the radar. Checking out her share structure. Outstanding shares. Nice. We've got only about 79 million outstanding. Float, well, that's not real clear. They tell us here over a year ago that the float was 34 million. 
unrestricted shares 62 million so i really don't know now if this was a pink i'd jump into the financials because disclosures tell you what the float is but all the rest of the financials the qb qx nasdaq none of them want to share that information so the best you can do is jump on over here to google just put in the name of the company the ticker the word float and maybe the word outstanding what i came up with was three results we got 25.3 million, 26.6 million, and 25.4 million. Though none of them agree, they are all pretty much in the same neck of the woods between 25 and 26 million, which isn't a bad float at all. Financials. All right, looking at her financials, you can see there has been a huge jump. From 2020, she was at $292,000. We got three zeros here. We got to put behind any of the numbers here. Year later, she has over $9 million. Looking at our quarterlies to get some info on 2022. First quarter, she was at $6 million. Second quarter, $11 million. Third quarter, $12 million. And we've heard that the fourth quarter is $15 million. Looking at it all put together, they say that up to the third quarter of 2022, they have done $64 million worth of revenue. Well, 2021, they just did $9 million. Boom! They are exploding, folks. They have just moved into positive adjusted EBITDA. That's always good. And their growth is continuing. You have got six quarterly reports here. Quarter after quarter after quarter, they just keep adding on revenues. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And this company is working with a lot of other companies. And I'll share some of that information with you when we get to that. So financials, they are growing. They are doing very well in that department. Now it is a startup company. They've only been around since 2019 and they just started making money as you can see in 2020. So to see them starting to make profits already is good, but they've got a ways to go. They still have some financial aspects they've got to work on being a startup company. But the cure to that is to draw in some strong revenues and work with strong companies that can help those revenues grow. And they're doing exactly that. Looking at her disclosures, and they have nothing current under their SEC filings right now, but all of their financials are current. Now, before we go jumping in the news, because the news doesn't make a lot of sense unless you understand what the company's all about. So let's go take a look at the company. We've landed over here at one of the websites for the company, esegaming.com. The company's got four divisions and they got a website for each division, but they might have more websites than that. I really don't know. Now, the first piece of information I want to share with you from this website is some information about the management about the CEO specifically. Now, I always say, if you wanna to get to know the company, get to know the management. They're the ones at the wheel driving this thing. They can make or break the company. So the more you actually know about the management, the more you actually know about the company. So this is our man here. This is Conrad Wasila. Probably got the last name wrong, so we'll just call him Conrad. He is the CEO and founder, nice looking man, ex-football player, clean shaven. Well, he was in this picture. In his most recent videos, he's grown a full beard, not as full as mine, but a real nice looking one. Now, the great thing is he is not just the CEO, he is the founder of the company. And that is important, folks. It's literally precious because it means he's got an emotional attachment to this company. It's his dream. So I assure you, he will be putting his best foot forward. So what can we learn about Conrad? Well, they tell us here that Conrad is the founder and CEO of ESC Entertainment. He's a graduate of the University of British Columbia and a Canadian Football League alumni. He's played on three different teams in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and Montreal. Through his business ventures and international holdings, Conrad has worked alongside global leaders in the gaming and entertainment industry. This includes successful collaborations with EA Sports, Flutter Entertainment, Take-Two Interactive Software, Full Tilt Poker, Betfair, and Remote Gaming Association. The man gets around. I recognize a lot of those companies. And he was found currently to be saying this about the company. He states, 
As we start executing our fiscal 2023 plans, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our shareholders and share some highlights that ESE accomplished in the 2022 fiscal year, including our key milestones and objectives. We surpassed revenue goals, reached positive adjusted EBITDA, formalized partnerships with some of the world's largest companies, including Google and Toyota, signed agreements with tier one publishers, and completed a successful acquisition. Our team's relentless work ethic alongside a strategic business plan yielded a successful 2022. And now we're setting our sights on following up 2022 with even a stronger year in 2023. Now, I would like to use this site to share a lot of information with you, but to be quite honest, it's really not for the investors, but I do have a great site here just for the investors. Hey, we got lucky here. I got myself a page that has got a lot of accumulated due diligence on this company already, and they do go through each of the four divisions, giving us a little bit of insight to what they do, and they're not long-winded about it. So, they tell us here that ESC Entertainment is a European-based media and technology company that provides the infrastructure and expertise for esports publishers to reach their intended audiences. The company currently operates four main business lines and is actively pursuing additional opportunities to further build out its portfolio of assets in the rapidly growing global esports industry. Now, fact of the matter is they may be up to five now. Taking on that iGaming, though it isn't growing up yet, that would be a fifth division. So they tell us down here the description of those four divisions and they tell us it is a 360 solution company. What we mean by that is they've got all the bases covered. They are literally coming at their business from every direction. So this is the four descriptions for the four divisions they've got. This is ESE. They're responsible for connecting the publishers of the games to the gaming enthusiasts who want to play them. ESE's core business effectively connects esports game publishers to the European market by hosting tournaments, sourcing content licensing agreements with media partners, and launching marketing initiatives to drive user engagement. Now, right now, they're primarily in Europe, but it's a big world out there, and most of the world <laughs> likes to play games. So I'm sure they have plans to conquer the whole world. And that is what ESC does right there. They stir up the buzz. They get people excited about these games and the tournaments. Their second division is in sim racing. Sim racing is actually driving cars in a game, but it's not a game. It's a simulator. It's as close to real life as you can get without getting hurt. Well, they had recently bought Digital Motorsports, which specializes in developing customized simulators and offers turnkey simulator packages for individuals, corporate events, esport competitions, and would you believe, driver training. <laughs> According to company estimates, the global motorsport industry is worth approximately 159 billion euros. Don't worry about the conversion, it's still a very huge number, with 2.7 million annual motorsport participants. Their third division, they went out and bought themselves a team so they could compete as well. Championship Esports Team, Kick Esports Club is one of Europe's oldest gaming organizations and a pioneer of the European esports market. The club's professional teams have a long history of success, competing in over 500 tournaments and receiving over 850 awards. The last division, if you don't count the iGaming, is WPG, World Performance Group. They acquired this company back in April of 2021. They got 51% of it. And they're responsible for fan engagement. Once you get all that buzz stirred up, you get people joining. Well, once they join, you need to keep in touch with them because they may just walk away. So this is a real important aspect of their business. WPG specializes in catering to both the esports and the racing simulation customers, and they provide their game publishers with multiple avenues to stay in touch with their fan base. They can use traditional media like email and phone calls, new contact channels like Reddit and Discord, and and social media to reach fans and drive that all-important engagement. Now, the company's got ideas of how to capitalize on what they're already doing. That's what a good company does. One of them is cross-selling. 
which just makes sense. If you have a lot of customers in this section of your business and a lot of them over here in this section, but they're not together, you need to find some way to bring those two groups together so this business can share these customers and vice versa. And they want to work with some organic growth from expanding their sim racing business, which is growing very quickly. Management sees a significant opportunity to drive organic growth primarily through the expansion of its sim racing and league infrastructure businesses. On the sim racing front, ESC expects to develop its current manufacturer partnerships. They've already got one with Porsche. They got one with Kia. I know they just made one with Toyota. I don't know how many more they've got, as well as add new agreements with both racing series, NASCAR and Indy. So they're working with huge corporations, huge companies. Matter of fact, folks, there is such a huge list of people that they are partnered with. You can't even get them all on the screen. Now I can share some of them with you. You can see there's big names in there. Toyota isn't in there yet. Google isn't in there yet. They have got so many huge companies working with them, I can't see how they can fail. When you have that much support with everybody pulling in the same direction, I mean, the sector's already booming. People love games. And when you start paying them, I mean, these players are actually making five, six digit incomes a year just playing games. So yeah, this is a huge business all the way around for the consumers, the players, and the companies. So now that you know a little bit about the business, a little bit about their financials, which means there's more due diligence to do, let's go take a look at that chart. As I usually do, we're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. I got this free when I signed up for my free account with TD Ameritrade. So can you. So this is ENTEF, a one-year, one-day chart. Our 52-week high is $1.03. Our 52-week low is 22 and a half cents, and this is at the end of December. She has been falling all of this time. This was as close as she got to that 200-day SMA in all of this time. She did get through the 50 a couple times, and she's trying it right now, and she is wrestling to stay on top of that 50. Our technicals are pretty weak. Uh, they actually look like they have more down pressure right now than up pressure on the one-day, one-year chart. Six month, four hour chart. Our high here is 69 cents and of course our low doesn't change. Now here we've actually touched the 200 day SMA. But when you see your 200 day SMA or for that matter a 50 day coming downhill like that, don't expect a breakthrough to actually start surging through it. You normally don't see a run until the SMAs plane out and get level or start to turn up. And that's what we've got right now. Our 200 day SMA and our 50 day SMA are both starting to plane out and starting to turn. Our prices bounce off of that low bubble, gotten over the 50 day SMA, tapped to 200, that's nice to see, came back down here, looks like she was gonna go under the 50, but has jumped right up there and is sitting there, looking like she might wanna continue climbing. Our technicals, they say we're in recovery. She came under and it looks like she's trying to come back up and get on top of that pink line, which will give us some more power. Same thing with the MACD, she came underneath, looks like she's trying to work her way up. RSI, it is pushing up right now. It has jumped from 39 to 48. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. What the heck is that? What a mess. Look at our SMAs. There's our 200, our nine day, our 20, our 50. I mean, they're all over the place. It's very difficult for the price to find traction and get a direction when your SMAs are all screwed up like that. She did jump here from uh, about 29 cents, which is where she's at right now, up to 35 cents, getting over that 200 and confused, came crashing back down to every single SMA, went under the nine day, hitting this low of 28 cents and has bounced off of it. And right now is sitting up on top of her nine day SMA. We do show some strength on the one hour chart. Our PPO is starting to push up just a little bit and our ADX, this shows me trend continuation. In short, when this blue line is going up and your red line is coming down and they're separating, the price is climbing. So as long as we see these two separating right now, we know the price is gonna continue to climb. We've got a imminent crossover right there on our MACD and we are still climbing on our RSI. 
Now, when I come down to the five minute, there really isn't a whole lot to see. So I'm gonna back out to the 10 minute so we can see just a little bit more. So we're underneath the 20 here and underneath the nine at 32, 33 cents. We have fallen all the way down here, staying under the nine predominantly all this time. And here she just jumped getting on top of that nine day SMA. I keep talking about that because you cannot climb until you're on top of the nine. It's just that simple. So as long as she's under the nine, she is still in fall position. She is now in the position to start climbing. It's not a guarantee, but she could do it. Our technicals are showing that strength. You see that spread on the blue and the red. We got that crossover just about ready to happen on our 10 minute and she is pushing up. She is under the radar. She's been falling for a very long time, but you see her revenues are growing really quick. They're making lots of deals. We didn't even go through all the deals that this company has made, folks. When I say that they've got lots of partners, lots of deals, I mean it. I think they've got something like 350 partners that they're working with. I could be wrong there, but it is a huge number. So I really like this company. I think they're gonna boom. I think they're gonna explode. When they get out of Europe and start going into other countries, how big can this possibly get? Just imagine, I really like this company. Why? I'll tell you why. I got five good reasons. First, communication. This company likes to communicate with their investors. They put out press releases. They put out filings. They actually reach out to the shareholders and they talk about us. I like that. Uh, as I said, shareholders matter. They are concerned about the value of the stock. As I said at the very beginning, the CEO, Conrad, is the founder. You cannot put a company in any better hands than the founder. They care. They're making intelligent acquisitions. Go through the list, go through the news and see who they're acquiring. Everybody is making money and helping them to make money. Speaking of making money, their financials are growing. They're growing at a very strong clip right now and every acquisition they make, every deal they make just keeps adding on more money. Now, I'm not saying things are perfect with them financially. They are a startup company. They are still taking care of a few things, but as long as they keep pulling money in, I'm sure all those problems will work themselves out. And last but not least, you've got competent management. Now, we only looked at the CEO, but the others are just as good. Take your time and read up on their dossiers, folks. I'm not kidding when I say knowing the management is knowing the company because the management is the company. They can make or break that company. So. Look that information over, folks. I'm sure that you'll find a lot of good stuff in there. Hopefully, I've shared enough information with you here to keep you interested to want to do more due diligence. I like this company. I think this is just the beginning of the recovery. Remember, folks, the more due diligence you do, the more you're going to know. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.